Well, conservatives have argued for decades that college campuses are completely, perhaps irredeemably nuts, but now things are getting so bad that even the most popular figures on the left are upset about it. Over the weekend, Senator and self-described socialist Bernie Sanders had very harsh words for activists at UC Berkeley, those who are trying to forcibly block an appearance by Ann Coulter. Huffington uh, Post interviewed Sanders and he said this, quote, what are you afraid of? Ask her the hard questions. Booing people down or intimidating them or shutting down events, I don't think that works in any way. Meanwhile, lefty comedian Bill Maher weighed on the, on the exact same subject. Here's what he said. Berkeley, you know, used to be the cradle of free speech, and now it's just the cradle for <laughs> babies. <laughs> you know? yeah. And I, I feel like, you know, this goes on all over the country on campuses. They invite someone to speak who's not exactly what liberals want to hear, and they want to shut her down. I feel like this is the liberals' version of book, book burning. Yeah. And it's got to stop. Hmm. Maybe the difference is Sanders and Maher are both old enough to remember when the left believed in free speech rather than paying lip service to it. And speaking of rot emanating from college campuses, Duff McDonald is a business reporter based in New York City. He just wrote a book called The Golden Passport, Harvard Business School, The Limits of Capitalism and the Moral Failure of the MBA Elite. It's a big book and it's smartly reported and argued, and it argues this. America's most prestigious business school is at least partly responsible for the fact our economy is increasingly fake, designed to benefit the already rich, and in general, pretty screwed up. Duff McDonald joins us now. Duff, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, Tucker. So you call Harvard Business School in this book dangerous. Why is it dangerous? It's dangerous because they are uh, failing at their mission of creating an enlightened uh, managerial class. They're sending out graduates who uh, view the world in a certain way and without the right uh, moral framework to go about the life they probably should. And there are a lot of them. There are some over like 75,000 or more HBS graduates basically running the American economy. What are the attitudes that you think are the most harmful to the country? Well, one of them is uh, what I call a sort of analytical worldview, where uh, because they're taught by spreadsheet, they think they come to believe that the most important things in any decision or organization are those things that you can counter measure, when any sane person knows that that's not true. Another one is uh, they teach by what's called the case method. And I think there's sort of an amoral uh, underbelly to that in which it, it, they're taught that there is no one right answer to any business section. There's only well-articulated or less well-articulated answers. And that can lead you right down the slippery slope into justifying any decision you want. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Now, you went to Wharton Business School, which is the, basically the main rival uh, to Harvard. So obviously, you're, you're not against all business schools. But you argue, at least I took away, the argument that the distribution of wealth in our country, where an ever smaller number of people have an ever larger percentage of it, causing all this volatility in our country, that's directly related to the lessons taught at Harvard Business School. Is that a fair summation of what you're arguing? Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, you know, it's important to, to remember they were founded uh, around the, the time of the last big populist revolt a century ago when Americans were concerned that the robber barons were going to eat everything in their path. And yeah. here we are a century later. There's a reason Donald Trump. Uh, got elected. It's because the people are angry at the way the elites have handled the economy and yes. the spreading of the wealth just isn't happening the way it should. And the people who have been in control have been from Harvard Business School. It seems like, uh, you know, these are all smart people. Everyone knows a bunch of smart people went to HBS, of course. Mm -hmm. But it seems like there's a certain mindset that comes out of there that has to do with short term gain over long term health. Is it fair to lay that at the feet of the school? Absolutely. Uh, you know, one thing I point out in the book is, uh, you know, the emergence of shareholder capitalism in the 80s during the Reagan era, when basically we went from uh, uh, thinking managers had responsibilities to other constituencies to management having one responsibility alone to the share price. Uh, Michael Jensen, who was uh, uh, one of their most um, well-known professors at the time, he was like the intellectual vanguard of agency theory and shareholder capitalism. So they have a lot to do with it. So when you say businesses used to think they had other constituencies, what were those constituencies? Their employees, their communities, their country. Look yeah. at all the tax inversions that, you know, you can have any position you want on tax inversions, but basically someone asked someone from Apple when they said, well, how do you guys feel about not paying any tax in the states and they said our responsibility is to our shareholders it's not to this country and it's it's, it's amazing that they can pump out people who can't 
entertain the idea that you can have responsibilities in more yeah. than one constituency at the same time. That's exactly, and it's been going on so long that the rest of us don't even notice. Well, I've got a responsibility to my shareholders, so what about your country? It's a great point, and I'm glad that you reminded us that it wasn't always that way, and it happened for a reason. Duff McDonald's a great book. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, Tucker.